All right, guys, working on my door strikers for my 55 two-door hardtop Bel Air. This is a door striker for 55, 56, 57 Chevrolet car. Maybe do the same on some other GM cars. I don't know. I know for sure five, six, and seven, though. Anyway, this is what one looks like. It bolts into your door jam. Uh, you know, after you paint a car, you sure don't want to bolt something like that back in there. Uh, now, they do sell these new. Uh, they sell a factory replacement. And also, there is a company making really awesome build aluminum ones. And I really want those build aluminum ones, but uh, the price is uh, fancy too. Uh, I I'll get them later, but I've got more important things to get right now than billet strikers. Uh, so I've decided I'm going to try to uh, detail the ones, uh, my stock ones, and use them. And then later, when I have a little extra money, uh, I'll get the billet ones. Anyway, so this is what I did. Uh, so this is your just what a factory one looks like. Now, they're basically made up of uh, four parts. They have a latch plate, a uh, tooth plate right here. This is actually steel. The whole housing is pot metal. For years, I thought this was aluminum. Uh, but anyway, it's pot metal housing with a tooth plate, and it's actually steel. So anyway, I took... Uh, a drill bit the same width as that pressed over pot metal rivet head there and drilled it out a little bit and then removed the plate. Uh, and then I took a die grinder with a cone burr and I went around the edge of this pin head right here and then knocked the pin out. So this is what your pin looks like and it basically just goes in just like that holding that on. Now, once you grind that head off, uh, in the case of these, they had a hole here, so I stuck a punch in there and knocked that pin out. Uh, anyway, once you get the pin out, it's basically just three pieces. You have a spring and you have a little nylon guide. Now, your nylon guide, it's uh, mine are in pretty nice shape, so basically just going to use like some thousand grit or 1500 or 1200, just a little piece of sandpaper and sand them down a little bit and then use Mother's Magnet Aluminum Polish with a microfiber rag and it'll polish that, make it look nice and shiny again. Now the spring, uh, these are a little bit, I've already cleaned this one up a little bit, they're pretty much were surface rusted. Uh, so what I, I've got a long old screwdriver that I don't even use it anymore, uh, but this fit over the end of that screwdriver just fine. Uh, so I spray painted uh, on it basically to hold it you know, while I could spray paint it. But what I'm going to use is just chrome spray paint in a spray can. Uh, you could use just about any color you want. You could use body color if you wanted to. But uh, in my case, I just did them uh, chrome in a can. So anyway, once you get that drilled out and get your plate off, uh, at that point, I ground the pad down right there about halfway because it's too tall other lines. And then you can put the plate back on there. And I drilled and tapped it to 1032. Uh, the reason I did that is because I took the plate down to Lowe's a while ago, and I just went through the stainless steel countersink Allen drawer until I found these that the head was actually perfect fit. I didn't want anything sticking up, uh, but they, 1032 was perfect because it fits flush right even with it. Um, anyway, so I bought a four pack at Lowe's, I think it was like three bucks, they're Hillman. They are 1032 by half inch long, and they're countersink Allens, and they're stainless steel. So the reason I got that particular screw for that is because I had bought these several years ago. This is from Totally Stainless. This is for your door strikers and your door latches, and this is a hardware set, and this is all stainless steel countersink Allens. So I wanted it all to match. This is basically what it looks like, one of the main bolts from the kit. Um, anyway, you'll have to sand and polish these because they are not polished. These are kind of dull. So a little bit of polishing heading my way. So this is what a factory uh, screw looks like. It's just a Phillips. And then here's the totally stainless with the Allen wrench head on it. It just looks more custom to me, a lot cleaner. Because, uh, you know, usually them Phillips ones, they burr out like crazy. But anyway, so that's what I did there. Now, um, being as this is pot metal and this is steel, uh, I thought about having these chrome plated. Uh, but the money I'd spend on having these steel tooth plates, 
uh, chrome plated, I could probably put just a little bit more and buy the build aluminum strikers. So that's what I'm going to do. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to sand and polish the pot metal housing and the plate, sand and polish them until they look like chrome, or at least polished aluminum. Then I'm going to clear coat them, and that's to keep them from tarnishing or rusting. Because pot metal, uh, you can polish the crap out of it, it just tarnishes real quick and turns gray looking. Uh, now of course this, steel, if you polish it, uh, it's just going to rust. So what I'm going to use is aerosol uh, engine enamel, duplicolor engine enamel, uh, clear coat. I've used that stuff in the past on some little stuff under the hood and it's held up really good. I'm pretty impressed with it. It's pretty durable and I actually have about a half a can here so I'm going to use that. I generally don't use aerosol paints on my restorations. It's mainly car paints on just about everything because uh, it just lasts longer and it holds out better, you know. It's more uh, resistant to chemicals and that type of stuff. Uh, but in this case, I'm just trying to keep something from tarnishing or rusting, so that's why I'm going to use it. Uh, I could clear these with automotive clear. It'd just be a lot thicker, and it'd probably uh, flake off easier at that point, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm just going to one coat them with aerosol clear and be done with it. But uh, anyway, so after you drill and tap this out, 1032, that way your plate can bolt back on there. Uh, the other problem you're going to run into is your pin, once you take it out, you know, I ground that material away, there's no way of holding that pin back in there. Uh, you could probably epoxy it in there, use panel bond or something, you know, JD weld or something, it'd probably be fine. But uh, what I did was if you turn it around, there's a little indent with a flat pad right here, and I drilled it to 832, and I'm going to use a little Phillips set screw, 832 Phillips set screw here. So that is what I'm going to do. Uh, so it'll basically hold tension on it, won't come back out. Now I'll use Loctite on the tooth plate bolt and the little set screw uh, when I put it back together after everything's clear coated. But uh, again, this is just what I got to do because I got more time than money. So I don't know if I mentioned it, but on that, you can use Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish on your nylon guide uh, after you sand it with like 1200 or 15 or whatever you had. Uh, and it'll pretty much look really, really nice. Uh, it's not bright white, it's more of an off-white, you know, like a, I don't know, it, it looks good enough. But anyway, after about four hours worth of work, <laughs> this is what you end up with. Now this one's not clear-coated yet, I just put it together to do the video. Uh, I will take this back apart and clear-coat the tooth plate and the housing, but um, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the only money I've spent, I had everything else already here. The only thing I spent was for the screws, you know, at Lowe's. Uh, I think it was like three bucks, maybe four bucks uh, for a four pack, and I only used two. But I already had everything here, so it just worked out for me. Now I used, uh, I buffed everything on my buffing wheel on my bench grinder. Uh, I've got a big uh, buffing pad. If you don't know much about polishing metals on buffing pads on, like on a bench grinder. Uh, most bench grinders are too fast. I mean, you can still do it, uh, but they're really supposed to be a little bit slower and a little bit uh, more torque. Uh, mine is just like a standard, it's a big sucker, but it's, it's kind of high speed, but I use it anyway. But what you don't want to do is use your same buffing wheel for everything. Uh, like for instance, you do not want to polish something uh, aluminum and then turn around and try to polish something stainless on it because it will scratch the crap out of the stainless. The aluminum will uh, basically contaminate that pad. It will come off and get into that pad. Uh, so it's contaminated. You can scratch it out all you want with whatever, but it ain't coming off there. So uh, it will end up scratching your stainless steel. So what you need to do is you need two pads. This is just what I do. You can do whatever you want. I use uh, I have two separate pads and I wrote on them with a Sharpie. One says stainless, one says aluminum, and I keep them in big Ziploc bags. That way, they don't ever get contaminated with paint or dust or whatever, and uh, I know what they're for when I pull them out of the bag. But anyway, keep that in mind. So anyway, once you're done, uh, pull those in there. Of course, it's dull. I need to polish that one, but uh, that's what you get when you're done. Uh, now, I know when I put the clear coat on that, it's probably going to make it look a little bit different shade. It won't quite be as chrome looking, but I'm good with that. As long as it doesn't tarnish, I'm good. Uh, but anyway, the little spring there, uh, you know, they're pretty surface rusted. Uh, 
and so I used a little wire reel, cleaned it up, and then I stuck it over a screwdriver and I painted it chrome in a can. So I may already mention that. I don't know. But your pen is also pot metal, so you can sand and polish it as well. But uh, anyway, I'm pretty happy with that for uh, nearly four hours worth of work. This one is, is ready for clear, rather than I have to take it back apart. But uh, now that four hours includes taking them both apart and drilling and tapping both of them. Uh, and then I've already Rolock scotch brighted this one, you know, to get the casting lines out. But uh, so now I'll go through all the grades of sandpaper and then go through and do all the buffing. Uh, now I was a jeweler for several years, so in my house I have a bench set up in there and I have a flex shaft. So I have all these attachments that go in there and I used a combination. I used a horsehair brush uh, with green polishing, stainless steel polishing rouge on it and also used a little small, like a Dremel style buffing wheels, uh, little ones, uh, to get down in all of these edges and down inside this and everything uh, to make that look that way. Again, if you don't clear coat this, this will, the pot metal will turn really dark gray rather quickly and this will rust very quickly. Uh, now with the aerosol, you know, your door striker, uh, the, the gear part of it, when it rolls over this, uh, it's gonna flake off that clear, but I don't think it's going to matter because it'll always stay shiny in that spot. When you open and close the door, it's going to keep it pretty shiny, so I'm not too worried about it. Again, I'm going from that to this, so you know, for just a few bucks. But anyway, I am pretty happy with it. Uh, I've said it a million times, I got more time than money, so this is just what I had to do. But uh, I'm going to be proud to bolt that in there at the end of the day.